Welcome to Revolutionary Motion, where we show you tennis from a different perspective. Today I will walk you guys through one of our clay court practice sessions from our trip to Germany this summer. And so as you can see here, we're starting by warming up through the center, trying to get a feeling for all of our shots, including slices and topspin shots, hitting a bit harder, some a little bit softer, and really trying to figure out how to control our balls right from the start of the practice session. Now, as you can see here, the rally is quite long for the start. And yes, we do sometimes miss in between, and that's totally normal. Uh, the idea is just to keep your rhythm up and really try to keep working hard throughout the whole warm-up. Now we're moving over to forehand cross courts. And as you can see, again, there are some misses here inside our video, and that's totally normal again. And we're totally fine with that because every single one of our shots has a purpose. I'm trying to keep the ball kind of close to the single sideline here, uh, missing a couple, but also making a couple good shots in between. And Kata is really trying to figure out a way to hit through her forehand on the clay court here. Now we're moving over to the backhand side. We're still doing cross courts. And again, it doesn't mean that I'm only going to hit backhands here. I might be hitting some forehands in between. And I'm just trying to figure out what kind of shot I can use in which situation uh, without feeling uncomfortable. Because in the end, if you're playing a match, you need to realize what kind of shots you can comfortably hit so you make decisions that don't put you at a disadvantageous uh, position. So here I'm using a lot of slice, but in between trying to accelerate my two-handed backhand or my one-handed backhand depending on the situation. Now we're going to the next exercise where Kata is playing every ball to my forehand side and I'm trying to make her move to side to side. Now it's not easy for her obviously because she has to cover the whole court but keep in mind despite the fact that I only have to cover half a court I'm under a lot more pressure trying to make her move side to side without missing my shots. Now that pressure can really get to people sometimes and it's not easy to control your shots all the time especially if you have that target in mind of going side to side however an exercise like this really helps you to dictate a point in a match because you're not relying on your opponent hitting a specific shot for you to be able to hit that down the line or cross court shot that you have in mind but rather you you know that you're able to hit those shots no matter what your opponent does now this is a longer rally here, you'll see Kata is moving quite a lot all the time, so I'm sure it's quite exhausting for her here, and you can probably also hear that in her breathing. So um, you can see that, you know, obviously because I'm at an advantage here, uh, I have an easier time making her move, so I'm trying to keep it a bit simpler for her once she's completely out of position so we can keep the rally going. But that's obviously very, very exhausting for her. So. You know, kudos to her to actually go through all the way and, you know, manage to make me miss in the end. Now we're doing the same thing on the uh, backhand side. And you can see here I'm, you know, using quite a lot of slices here. Uh, and that's just because I feel more comfortable moving the ball around with my slice. Now in between, I do hit a couple of backhands, but it's usually only when I really feel comfortable in my position and know that I can go through that ball without going for too much pressure here and you know obviously without missing too many shots after that um, you can see that you know we're still playing some cross courts again here and this is really just um, a request of mine because I didn't feel my backhands the way I really wanted to in the beginning of the warm-up and so I tried to hit a couple more backhands with more pace and more spin uh, even though you see me hitting a couple of slice balls in between here as well. But I'm really trying to just figure out what kind of shot I can hit in which situation. And, you know, I got quite a lot of feeling out of that. So that really helped me uh, towards the next session of uh, section of our um, practice, which is uh, baseline points. So you can see here, we're starting by feeding the ball cross court deep, and then it's open play right away. Now, my objective here is very different from Kata's. My objective is to really just place the ball side to side. I don't care how hard I hit it as long as Kata is moving around. Now, in her case, she's trying to move the ball a lot more with flatter shots. 
so she you know makes it harder for me to actually move to the ball because the ball skids a lot more and gets faster on the bounce so for me that's not really an objective I'm trying to add more spin putting her off position with placement and trying to make her uncomfortable with the height of the of the bounce you know be it a low slice like you see here or a higher top spin ball in between um, many times when we play these points you can see that Kata is running a lot more than me and that's due to the fact that uh, my placement is obviously good but also she's not as used to playing on clay courts as I am because she hasn't been playing on clay courts in quite a while before this session so uh, it's really important to to keep that in mind because that explains why it seems like she's running so much her movement is not as efficient as it usually is on a hard court for example now here I've been going for a couple more shots in between like this one I tried to go for down the line backhand and missed it um, and it's due to the fact that I, I really wanted to you know get more out of my my practice session by being a bit more aggressive from time to time when I feel like I have a chance and even though I miss a couple of those uh, I make sure that I don't miss too many in a row because if I miss two or three of them that's it's very easy to you know lose a game right away um, and that's something you want to avoid so when I miss one or two I try to be more conservative with my next shots and try to go back to what worked so far on this day and in this case it was more slicing uh, softer placement and really trying to be consistent with my shots while moving well and making the right decisions here one thing to keep in mind when you do practice on a clay court it is really common that balls uh, miss bounce because the clay court is not as even as a hard court would be. So you can see many times here it seems like we just completely misjudge the ball but many times it's, it's actually just that the ball miss bounces and it's very difficult to then improvise and still pull off a good shot. Now if you're looking at the match here you can see I'm a bit more defensive uh, but I'm still managing to keep Kata quite far behind the baseline uh, despite my defensive shots and that's ultimately what wins me the point. It's not necessarily my pace, it's not necessarily my placement there. It's just getting the ball low enough and deep enough so that Kata cannot you know, come closer to the net approach and finish off the point easily so she has to risk a little bit more from the baseline. And again, you know, a lot of that has something to do with my experience on a clay court compared to hers. Now here, you know, it's again the same thing. She moves up to that drop shot and she doesn't manage to stop before she hits it. So then she's off position for the next one, making it a bit easier for me. The next point here, you can again see I'm trying to become a bit more aggressive, right? Trying to go for that early backhand down the line, coming into the net, finishing with an inside out smash that was very controlled and not very hard. Now next one, again, I'm trying to go for that power on my backhand, but I miss it, right? That's normal, that's totally fine, uh, and I'm okay with that. That's why I'm risking that much. I could have played the ball in with a slice, but again, it's practice, right? Just like here, I'm trying to go for a shot that I want to be able to make eventually, and you know, it's part of it that for now, maybe you miss them. Now we're going over to points with serve. And you can see here, uh, we cut out a couple of the first serves um, just because, you know, the video was getting too long. So sometimes you just see like a second serve and the point starts right away. So it's not like we're just putting every single first serve inside the court. Uh, it's actually because we cut some of those out. Now I'm playing a bit more serve and volley right in the start. And that's because I know that my kick serve is pretty effective and I push Pukata far off the court. So it's pretty easy for me to finish off an easy volley after that. Now Kata's game style is obviously more of a baseline game style so her serve doesn't have as much of an effect on me as mine has on her. But that doesn't mean that she can't be aggressive after her serve as long as she goes for the right shots. Um, yes, and one more thing to keep in mind is that on this specific day Kata didn't play her best tennis. Uh, I've seen her play a lot better, you know, namely in the tournament that we played a couple days after this this. Uh, practice session um, and I played quite well so if it seems like I'm winning a lot of points it's actually a combination of a lot of things it's not not that I'm so much better than her that I can't take her seriously it's just that she um, was a bit off even though she moved very very well here so keep that in mind when you're watching this
and um, you know remember that again it's practice it's okay if you have a bad day it's okay if your day is not perfect as long as you try hard all the way through and really try to make it work to the last point so it's an attitude thing here and you can see she's not happy but she keeps fighting for every single point runs left and right and tries to really make the best out of her ability on that given day which is worth more than anything else because if you learn how to improve on your worst days you will improve on average and that's what it's really about because anybody can play a good match on a good day but playing a good match on a bad day that's really something that's not very easy to do so it requires a lot of practice which means that these kinds of days where you don't play so well are actually the most valuable practice sessions that you can get all right so now we're getting towards the end here um, the last couple of points are you know a bit quicker but I think we're finishing off here with a quite interesting point now we included the first serve here so let's watch this one in silence real quick hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you next time hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon